Hello, this is Mark from tradeinformed.com and welcome to this video on backtesting super trend trading strategy using Excel. First thing I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to identify the trading strategy. Then we're going to look at the spreadsheet that we're going to use to carry out the backtest. We're going to look at the variables that can be adjusted to in the trading strategy and we're going to see the results of the backtest. We're going to see how profitable the trading strategy is. And finally we're going to do a step through analysis and what I mean by this is we're going to initially optimize the strategy on a particular time period of historic data and then we're going to take exactly the same optimize variables and we're going to move forward onto a future time period from the original and we're going to see if the trading strategy is still profitable. Okay, so the trading strategy is here. It is a nice, simple, robust trading strategy. It's certainly possible to refine this and, imp and, and potentially improve it and make it more profitable. We're going to enter a long trade when the closing price is above the 200 SMA and then crosses from below to above the super trend or when the closing price is above the super trend and crosses from below to above the 200 SMA. We're going to enter short positions in exactly the opposite scenario and we're going to close our positions when we either hit our profit target or our stop loss, when a trade is opened in the opposite direction and when our closing price crosses the 25 period EMA. Okay, so this here is the spreadsheet that we're going to use for the backtesting. For those of you who have uh, completed my ebook course, um, will be familiar with this. For those of you who haven't, I have got an ebook course called How to Backtest a Trading Strategy Using Excel. Now, the ebook course is available in the Amazon Kindle store, and by completing the course you will be able to set up this spreadsheet that we have on the screen here and carry out your own back tests using whatever indicators, whatever time periods and data and whatever criteria you like. Okay so I've just slightly amended the spreadsheet for those of you who have done the course I've entered a new column here for closing trades that are below the EMA and I've added in another column here to show the profit and loss when we close our trades using the EMA close. Okay, so all of the formulas that I've used in this spreadsheet will be available and I'm just going to include those on the article accompanying this video. Okay, so the time, uh, the historic data that I'm using for this backtest is the Euro US dollar Forex pair and I'm backtesting on the one hour time frame. I've put quite a lot of data into this spreadsheet. I'm using 20, I've got 20,000 one hour periods loaded in. This is a period of about three years and three months. Generally speaking it is the more data you use in your backtest the harder it is to make them profitable. It is very easy to make pretty much any strategy profitable if you use a small amount of data and you optimize it to a that particular time period. Here we're using quite a long period of time from 2004 to 2007 and in our step through analysis we will look at the future time periods from 2007. So the variables that we're using in the back test you can use as many variables as you like you can adjust the EMA the SMA the super trend variables but all I'm doing here is adjusting the profit target and the stop loss now these are calculated my favorite way to calculate these is using a multiple of the ATR and that is what I've done here so the stop loss is one times the ATR which is usually about 20 or 30 pips on this time frame and the profit target is five times that, so it's five times the ATR, so maybe somewhere between 100 and 150 pips would be our profit target. 
OK, so we can see on the right hand side of the screen the results of this trading strategy. You can see that over the time period the trading strategy has gone from $100,000, a notional $100,000, to $202,000. So we've just over doubled the initial starting account over this time. One thing that is worth noting for this type of trading strategy, and this one in particular, is we've got a pretty low percentage of winning trades. This is inevitable when we're trying to get large multiples of our, the amount risked per trade, that we're going to have a relatively no, low number of percentage winning trades. However, we are overall profitable, which is the important thing. OK, we can see that this trading strategy over those three years and three months is a, is a reasonable and profitable trading strategy. And what would happen if we looked at the next time period? So rather than adjust the spreadsheet here, what I'm going to do, or what I've already done, is load in the data using exactly the same criteria, exactly the same variables, and everything is the same apart from the time period. This time we're looking at 2007 to 2010. Now this is a pretty rocky time for those of you who were trading at that time. Between 2007 and 2010 we've had, we had the financial crisis, we had huge crashes in the stock market, and so this is an interesting time to test any trading strategy on. And you can see here, as I said, the variables are exactly the same. And we can see that the trading strategy here, we must have had some good strong trends during this time on the one hour time frame. And we've actually been able to increase our money from $100,000 at the start to $306,000. This is a pretty good return over three years, I would say. And we've actually got a slightly higher number of winning trades and the drawdown which is another important criteria, is pretty similar actually to the uh, first time period. OK, so this spreadsheet goes all the way up to 2010, September 2010, and then we've got the next set of data loaded into this spreadsheet here. Again, exactly the same variables, it is exactly the same trading strategy. And we can see here that we've got, again, a, a profitable period. We've been able to more than double our money during this time. We've gone up from 100000 to uh, $223,000, so it's a profit of 123000 You can see our percentage winning trade is very consistent um, between, in fact, all of our time periods have shown a very consistent uh, percentage of winning trades tw between 28 and 30 percent. The one difference in this time period is we have a much higher drawdown. Okay, so overall you can see that over the last 10 years, between 2000, the end of 2013 and 2003, this trading strategy has been consistently profitable over each of these three year time periods. As I said before this is a, a robust trading strategy, it's not an overly refined um, strategy. If you're looking to refine this further you could very well use a time filter, you may want to trade only during the European session or European and US session for example. You may well want to have a long candle filter to avoid the one hour data is particularly prone to large spikes on a one hour time period. You may want to exclude trades that have had a particularly large move on the one hour time frame. You may want to change the system of closing. We've used four different ways of closing a trade. Closing can always be improved, it can always be refined. and So there may well be other ways to close these trades and make this a more profitable trading strategy. Okay, so I hope you found this a useful guide for how to for backtesting a super trend trading strategy. Um, if you would like more information about backtesting using Excel and about the financial markets and trading in general, please go to www.tradingformed.com.